it's me, and I have a guest today, Faye, and she has generously offered some of her time to have a discussion and have, you know, trans women talk to trans women instead of just us on our YouTubes by mm. ourselves being pretty and all this stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's so nice to have somebody to talk to because yeah. I'm very lonely and <laughs> I have hardly any girlfriends. Just kidding. Aww. I mean, I live in a place <laughs> where it's redneck world and there's really, the trans community is not huge here, right? So Same. Where, Same. where are you from, Faye? Originally, I'm from, um, well, I only lived there for a short amount of time. I'm from Melbourne, Victoria. That's in Australia. And I moved when I was 13. And we just kind of moved, like, all around for, like, the rest of my life. We moved everywhere up and down the east coast of the United States. And we were just travelers. Like, that's all we did because either financial situations or just traveling in general. <laughs> so right now you're in... Are New you, Jersey. You're in New Jersey. Oh, yes. cool. <laughs> and I'm here in Canada. I know. So I, you're so a lucky. Lot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so how, you, uh, yeah, do you like that New Jersey accent you hear in the... They um, talk like that and they're like, hello, how's it? Are you doing one? <laughs> yeah, not, I mean, not really. I don't really, <laughs> I don't really hear it that much down in Rosenheim because where I am, it's like really country. So it's like a lot of rednecks too. <laughs> and it's a lot of like, um, it's just a lot of diverse people. It's not like a specific, that's more like towards the Jersey shore kind oh, okay. of. I'm in South Jersey. That's in like Western parts, I guess. Right, right. Yeah. So today we get to see you in your natural, natural state. My natural state. <laughs> and when you're on your day-to-day -day stuff, do you doll all up just to go to the supermarket? Or, like, is this mm -hmm. kind of you when you just want to go walk around and, and stuff well, like Usually, that? I mean, it depends on if I'm... I don't know. If I'm going someplace, usually I will get all dressed up. But if I'm just hanging around with friends. This is usually what I wear. I'm really comfortable in my skin right now. Oh, good for you. So you, you, it's not important for you like that to mm -hmm. to be who you are. You have to have this mask of hair and makeup. Yeah. I used to feel that way. I used to feel like, you know, you have to um, wear tons of makeup and you have to be so fish all the time and you have to look <laughs> a certain way. Right. Because, you know, in media and in YouTube and other people, that's all that we see is trans women so glamorous you know the big tits the big butt and you know just so girly and it's like that's good and all but the day-to-day -day person does not live like that so i don't know i'm just more realistic when it comes to things i guess so you're you're obviously young very young yes i'm 18 are you only 18 <laughs> Yes. Oh my God. Is it legal mm -hmm. for me to be talking to you like this? <laughs> of course. <laughs> <I'm just> like... <laughs> so, now you consider, and some of these questions are going to sound stupid and dumb, but mm -hmm. it, we're, I'm curious, and, and I, I'm not a know-all. I don't know everything, and, and I'm still discovering. So, are you now, do you consider yourself a woman? I'm that. Yes. You're not, like, questioning, <clears throat> or, or, or is there a gender fluid thing happening? It because was, of your age, I ask, because you're so young. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. That's and that's a big question that my parents give me sometimes. My grandmother, they all did that when I got the gender confirmation surgery. It's like a big deal with them. They're always just like, "Well, you didn't did it now. You can't go back now." So you've had so, the surgery. You've had SRS. Mm -hmm. Almost eighteen months. Eighteen months. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. I'm impressed. I, yes. mean, I was I was in my very early 30s when I had mine. I know. I was watching. I'm obsessed with your YouTube channel. Oh. Like I watched like all your videos. <laughs> Thank you, well, this yeah. is really neat to to hear because you know to think that you're so young and you knew. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, you know what? I know this part of my uh, my life. I know what's going on. Yes. I think that takes a lot of maturity and self. It is. It is. It's. Oh, I can't even describe to you how hard it is sometimes. And, you know, the pain from, you know, dilation and the pain of 
just being yourself in general and like people kind of just having already a, a stigma about you without even knowing you. It's just so many wow. things that go into being trans and so many things to go into it. It's just like people think it's all the glitz and the glams and the makeup and oh, pretty and <laughs> all that. But it's like, no, you got to get out here, work, make something of yourself mm -hmm. because they automatically already think we're sex workers and we're just these like yes. weird people, but we're not. We're human yes. and we're normal people. Yes. I would be a sex worker, but I don't think anybody wants to buy old ladies. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, but like, unfortunately, that's where um, they almost have no choice. They have to go into mm -hmm. that line of business. Yeah. Stuff. I would never judge anybody who chooses Me how neither. to earn their yeah. money. And, um, you know, for me, it's it, 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 even at my age and, you know, maturity and stuff like that, I still have a hard time feeling like I'm being treated with respect yes. and, and stuff like that. So um, I am really impressed that you have already done the big the big one. Yeah, and that was the major thing for me. Like I had to when I was like 15 and 16, I remember I was standing in the mirror and I was just so uncomfortable with myself. And I w had the scissors in my hands. And I was just like, I'm just going to right now. Just because I just couldn't take it. And then I explained these feelings to my parents. And they didn't understand it. And then I explained it to my um, grandmom, all of them. They didn't understand it. So it took them a lot to sign and be like, okay. Because I was underage. But, you know, my mom pulled through and she was just like you know if this is something that you want to do and if you feel like you want to go this far so early then do it you know as long as it makes you happy but you know well, if you, you know, feel there's, there's almost no doubt is there and for, for myself one of the things that i find very bizarre is i literally almost i can't even remember those previous body parts i literally yeah can't remember what it was mm -hmm. like not being fully uh yes female it's yes. one of those weird things. I don't think I never had phantom stuff happening. I never think mm -hmm. I have dreams of that previous person. Yeah, so it's very interesting how and there's the the debate now, and I get in trouble for it when it comes to <laughs> being a transsexual woman. That you know, if you're the one that is fine be being you know with the the penis and mm -mm. you're fine with that, mm -hmm. to me it's like no, that's a um, that's like a different category. Yes, a and trans. It, I can't. I worry. Oh, my only worry is that it lessens the mm -hmm. general view that we don't need this surgery. That, that we, we don't, don't exactly. Where I cannot me, stress that enough. Exactly because I wrote. I don't know if you saw it because we're friends on Facebook. I had wrote a huge article, and my friend, one of my close friends from my old school, Tyler, had wrote an article about it, and he stated that you know, basically saying what does it mean to you to be trans if you do not experience the gender body dysphoria to the point where you feel like the surgery is needed? And he basically was saying that if you do not, and it reminded me of the video that you made, he was basically saying that if you do not desire to get the full surgery and go all the way, it's either you're having gender non-conforming issues. He went in, he went in and he was just being honest. And I agreed. I said the same thing. I was like, if you do not just, and I went live on Facebook and I talked about it. Some people agreed, some people disagreed, but I feel like because in media, there's so many people who I love, like Steph Sanyati and, um, Angela Vanity, Gigi Gorgeous, like all these people yeah. focus around not getting it and you don't have to get it and it's okay. And I just feel like, yeah, that's your preference. Well, but I just it, feel like, you know what? It is okay. But mm -hmm. what it is, is that you are not a, a transsexual woman. Exactly. You're transgender. You're transfluid. Like I say, I, there are so many different varieties, which mm -hmm. I think is awesome as well. I'm, def I'm mm -hmm. an advocate that I love being in a world that has a variety of different types of human right. beings. And I think the more, the better. Not just being yes. this, only two groups, and that's it, men and women. No, I think it's wonderful. Yeah. However you know, for, for our small group, it, it's very, very difficult to be taken seriously if we're just, oh, you're just another gender fluid person. It's like, no, exactly. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm a woman and there's no doubt about it. I have no issues mm -hmm. in my head. Yeah. And no matter what people think, the troubles of being a transsexual 
kind of like at least for me 75 percent goes out the window as far as dating your sex life your love life because when you get that final surgery even if a guy like the thing that makes and from personal experience again at least in around where i am and what i've experienced the things that make men at least straight men uncomfortable is the fact if you still have a penis because it's confusing they see this gorgeous woman and the boobs and all that but then they get below and it's like and even for me sexually it was so weird and awkward because i'm like okay is it in the way like what do i do do i move do i so it's like it's a nightmare. getting that it's a nightmare mm-hmm, it it's a nightmare me. and i cannot stress to you the relief it was and how natural it felt just to be like and it hurt like a bitch. It was bad at first, but the just... So are you saying the, you have had sex as a woman? Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> but you're too young. What are you doing? <laughs> you yeah. should be married first. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, Can I you know. Imagine? No, I, you just, I, just, to... I just had to try it. I was like, you know, <laughs> it was it was just a crazy thing. But It took me like I three years. It took me like three years to get the nerve mm-hmm. to do it. Mm-hmm. And people were kind of shocked by that. And I said, well, I didn't have... A sex change to have sex. To yes, really, I had sex so I could I could be normal. I could go to a swimming pool. I could yes, wear not have to worry about your tuck slipping, all that. Whoa, it's a nightmare. Mm-hmm. It's a nightmare. It is. It's, mm-hmm. So this is where uh, it's nice to to see somebody so young and who know who knew, and <laughs> I I am also so happy for you that you have support that you had family support because. You hear the stories that the the mm-hmm. people are rejected and yeah. Black In the family. beginning, it was pretty difficult, and I'm not going to say it's peachy king like you know it's it's tolerated and is dealt with, but it's not like oh every single person you know supports me. I haven't gotten cut off by nobody. Like it's it gets rough and like you know sometimes when you're sitting all alone by yourself, you're just like you know what if I didn't? What I still have this person because you know. It gets lonely. Being a transsexual, it's, it gets lonely because when people don't understand something, they leave. And you just have to be brave enough and be strong enough to be an individual and like yourself. Like, I, I to this day, I could care less if somebody talked to me, not talked to me, because I like myself. I like being around myself. I like what I see when I look in the mirror. I enjoy my own company. Well, can you imagine that, you know... That's just it when it comes to identity and, you know, I really enjoy my own company. I honestly mm-hmm. do. And confident in myself. So then I try to get that out to people to start loving themselves and start learning to love themselves and accept themselves. Because if you don't, yes. even if you do have opportunities for relationships, they're ruined because you can't. Yeah, you gotta yourself, get it right? together with your own self first and love yourself. It's a RuPaul saying, if you can't love yourself, how in the hell are you gonna love somebody else? Like, <laughs> so how is it with, let's say, because I, I'm, not, I'm not sure how long you've been in your current um, location to, mm-hmm. to really make some close allies, but um, how, how has it been for you as a young person being now post op and ha- and and the gay community? Do you have, are you able to form relationships in that community? Um, friendships or like a love life? No, just, no, just friendships. Just friendships? friendships yeah. Um, yeah, I have two best friends, Giovanni and Christian. I have, they're like my everything. Like we're really close and I met them um, before I had transitioned. We had met because I was going to school with them. So they seen the whole process and, you know, right away, as soon as I told them, they were just like, oh girl, we already knew what you were feeling. We could tell. And they, you know, the pronouns, they switched the names. It was never a problem with them. They never slipped up in public, nothing. They were, I, I have never met more fantastic people, like as far as, and they're, they're, they identify as gay. Um, so that makes it, a lot easier because they understand they don't understand the tr- the struggle of what it means to be the T in LGBT but they understand what it means to be shunned and shut out and not accepted by family and friends and losing people. Well, I lost it's so funny. I mean, I lost people in the gay community. It's I right leading all the way up to having mm-hmm. surgery and then mm-hmm. when I had the surgery and I remember going to a huge party and it was my first time. I was actually still mm-hmm. healing. 
and you just saw the people getting uncomfortable immediately. And these yeah. are, were gay people and, their, and, and gay allies. Now, the thing is, my community also is uh, native, um, mm -hmm. aboriginal. So Ooh. even then, they already have prejudice with this and so I think with me it was mm -hmm. like they did not understand they could maybe understand gay and but they yeah. didn't understand this so mm -hmm. I think it was a double blow of like so unfortunately I did lose a lot of my gay friends you know I have mm -hmm. one or two that will, will always stick by by me but then I also mm -hmm. got attacked by lesbians like when yes. I went to a party a lesbian party and three of them literally like cornered me and who do you think you are and I was like yeah mm -hmm. that happens to me so much like I I now I see what where you're talking about what direction you're going in um yeah it's it's difficult and when you're young that happens all the time like people don't realize you know it's and especially if you're you know passable a little passable in between if you have a nice body like people get jealous over the stupidest things like i've had friends who like they compete with you they want to like compete and have this kind of like competition and you just sit there and just like we're friends like why is it like who's prettier who looks the best who's you know it's and even with our own sisters like it's like who's pretty, who looks the best, who has, like, who's more passable, and then with the gaze and stuff, with me personally, it's always been, like, a thing, like, oh, you think you're better than everyone, oh, who do you think, like you said, who do you think you I are? I have so been it's called like, an elitist, like, you know, <laughs> oh, you're, because you've had surgery, you're better than, let's say, the, the transvestite, mm -hmm. like, you're better, you think you're better because you've had the surgery, I'm like, oh my god. Mm -hmm. And that's the number one thing, it's always like, if we've gotten the surgery, we think we're better, like, so there's always going to be a thing, because, oh, you think you're full woman, you this, this, and that, so it's always going to be well, like that. Well, it's kind of like, when you're let off of being in limbo, mm -hmm. there is that confidence that comes out, right? Yes. And th that's the whole thing, like, you know, I think that confidence bothers people who don't have that. So the, are, are all these people who are in these gender things, th th they're still in limbo. So it, it, it bothers them when they see somebody else who's not in limbo. When it comes yes. to this kind of stuff, right? And, mm -hmm. you know, I think we have to stop um, criticizing each other. Like, who's more feminine, who's more pretty, who's exactly. more Exactly, who's because that. at the end of the day, we all, like, one might be more passable, one might be, we're all in the same group. If we were all grouped together, and the, I guess you could say, more traditional straight male looked at us, he wouldn't care who's prettier, who has this, who has that, because he looks at us all the same. And it's crazy to say, but it's like that with a lot of people in society. Well, I mean, I don't, um... I feel like I'm sort of in that middle ground, you know, I, I'm mm -hmm. passable in general. I mm -hmm. don't, I honestly, I don't have many instances people are calling me sir in person in my day. -to -day. Same. What it mm -hmm. is, is um, when, when you're kind of more scrutinized and yeah. then that starts coming up or men who kind of look at you and stuff like that. And I think mm -hmm. I, I just did my last video was basically talking about... <laughs> How to deal with men who are staring at you and stuff. Yeah. How, how do you deal with, with men in the day-to-day? -day? How do you deal with how you're being um, looked at? Can you say, like, are you over, like, oh, they're looking at me because I'm trans? Or are you going, oh, my God, you know? It's kind of in between. Like, I'm I usually up. have, like, I usually somewhat know the the clocking look or like the trying to flirt with you look like if a guy is usually giving me like a clocking look it's like this look that he gives you he just looks at you like kind of like looks at you but if he's like flirting with you and stuff it's kind of just like you feel it you can just feel the energy and the tension between so it's like if i'm being clocked i usually sometimes if i'm with my friends and we're acting out if i'm being clocked i just play along or I just like be ignorant or say something but if it's like a flirting thing I get really really nervous because even though like I might be perceived you know as beautiful or like people think I'm just like this beautiful person it's like it's nerve-wracking it's scary to at least to me dating is scary it, it is and it like I said that's why how, how I do my coping is like I just pretend <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, or I saw I'm that. Very I was dead, cold as ice, and I'm like, mm -hmm, yeah, mm -hmm, what do you want? You know, 
and but it is extremely uncomfortable. So mm-hmm. and the the funny part is I probably get hit on directly like I'm approached when I'm like this. No hair, yeah. through, no real makeup on, and stuff like Same. that. Same. I and I don't understand well, it. Well, you know what just... it is. It's because all women, cisgender mm-hmm. or, or us, that they that's when they're mostly approached. Because if you're too dolled up, whoever you are, you're unapproachable. Oh God, right. this is high maintenance. This girl mm-hmm. is high maintenance. This is you know, and I'm not talking about being in the club. Yeah, just in the day to day. So, day to day. But yep. people, and I want, that makes a lot of sense that they're going mm-hmm. to approach you when you're at your most normal. Yeah. And, and not, so, you know, I've been like in sweats and greasy hair and, stuff and, <laughs> Same. and, and guys have come up, hey, here's my number. Like, give me a call. Right? Yeah. I remember it was so funny. I remember it was actually last week because in the beginning of my transition, um, when before, when I was just on the puberty blockers, my features were more structured. I used to, pack on the makeup and stuff and then as i'm getting closer to now i realize that i don't like i've gotten more comfortable with myself so i just don't even care like i wake up you know i just feel good so i was out and i was in i always wear my sick and my jean jacket and my curly hair like that's all i wear and i was out with my friends and we were at the mcdonald's and we were driving through the um drive through and i was in the driver's seat so i was getting the food to my friends and looked just like this i was just chilling i was giving the food to my friends and everything and the guy he just looked at me and then like when he gave me the bag for the last time he like caressed my hand and he was like you're so beautiful oh my gosh who are you what's your name and then he was like pull around the front i want to talk to you and then we talked for like five minutes he gave me his number and i was like so shocked because i'm like when i'm all dressed up and i try to do my makeup and put on a cute outfit i do not get approached at all if anything i get clocked more which is so crazy it is very interesting, you know. It is, and, um, and I'm, I'm. I mean, for me, on when I go to work, or if I, you know, even when I was going taking some college courses, I still mm-hmm. put myself together. I, I've never been one to just kind of, and I think it has to do with just me being older. You're a little yeah. bit more insecure, and you just want to be mm-hmm. look more polished and stuff like that. And then yeah. I kind of went, well, okay, this it works two ways, so I can get all dolled up, and then I'm not going to be approached and bothered, and that sort of thing yeah. <laughs> sort of thing because i hate having mm-hmm. to deal with the whole oh my god hi how are you then i'm gonna have to go go into detail you know yeah i hate so, that it's so exhausting so i think maybe we should we you know we should get together again and talk about men and dating a little bit yes. more and what a perspective <laughs> it would be for you know my generation and your gener- generation yeah the differences of how mm-hmm. how it is and stuff like that because you're you have to deal with more players and you know, oh the, my god well for me <laughs> i get the you know i'm a cougar <laughs> like, yeah <laughs> sort of thing but let's end this right now okay. and let's talk again Faye. It, this was okay. awesome and i'm really honored that you took the time to to talk with me no and problem i think we need to have more of this that to show that we are supporting each other and not yes. bashing each other and calling each other down and stuff like that. Or competing. competing. It's not a competition. We're all in the same circle. We're, we're all beautiful. What? We're all on the same planet. Yeah. There's yeah. nowhere else. You can't go anywhere else until they figure that out, you know. Okay, yeah. so we will talk to you again, Faye. You have a wonderful day. Okay. okay. You too. All right, bye. Bye.